Today we're going to be looking at our small herd of cattle here, kind of how we have everything set up and what it takes to run a small herd of cattle here at Broken Arrow Farm. Hello everyone, Paul here at Broken Arrow Farm. Broken Arrow Farm is a small family farm comprising of several different enterprises within our farm. Beef cattle being one of those. That's what we're going to be looking at today. All right, it is a beautiful day today, about 40 degrees. It's about 80 degrees warmer than it was a week ago, if you can believe that. Here in Northeast Wyoming, we got down to about 40 below. Um, and that was without wind chill here about a week ago. So that was our first cold spell of the winter time. What, is, what have your guys' lows been so far for this winter? Go ahead and post them in the comment section down below. All right, let's head into the barn here. I'm gonna grab a couple buckets of feed, show you what I feed the cattle, and then we're gonna go down over the hill because the corral, the calving pasture is over the hill. So something I didn't mention is it is January. We're gonna start calving in about a month. So preparing for that as well. All right, inside the barn here. Excuse the mess, it is a little messy just because it is the middle of winter and it's been cold. But here is what we feed the cattle. We buy it bulk in these bulk, what's called a tote right here. Do the same thing with the chicken feed right there. So this isn't their only thing that they get. They just get this once a night. It's cow cake or range cubes is what it's called. So that is a 20% feed that they get once a day in the evening time. We got these two buckets here. Got some range cubes or some cow cake in there. This one is for the replacement heifers or the feeder heifers, whatever we're gonna call them right now. And this is for the mother cows right here. So something else I wanted to point out as I was filling up these buckets I just kind of saw in the background is a whiteboard topic about pastured turkey income. So it's got some expenses, it's got some income, and it's a whole total of what the profit's gonna be. If you're interested in raising pastured turkeys, as they are one of our enterprises here on the farm, I'm gonna go ahead and post a video link to raising pastured turkeys and how to make a profit with those guys in the very bottom here in the description. Go ahead and check that out when you're done watching this video. All right, let's get this feed loaded up and go down to the cows. We're heading down to the cow corral, or as I say, over the hill, because that's where the cow corral, the calving pasture is. House barn, all that kind of stuff is up here above where the cattle are located. So it's been a little cold, been a little snowy, but the snow's starting to melt. It's warming up, which is a good thing here. We are going to start calving in about anywhere from two to four weeks is when the first calf could hit the ground. Now, is that when I would ideally want to calve? No, it's not. But the reason that we calve during those dates is we've got a small cattle herd. So we don't own or retain a bull. We run our cattle with another cattle producer, a larger cattle producer, and essentially rent his bulls to breed our cattle. And that's when he wants to have calves. So at this point, that's our only option is to start calving in February. Ideally, I think April or May would be the best, but what we're doing now, that's not gonna work. So here down at the cow corral, there is an electric fence around it. All right, so here's down at, at the cow calving pasture, cow corral located there behind me. There's an electric fence right here behind me. I've got about seven acres fenced off for these cows to use as a calving pasture to keep them out of the pine trees. Now, I know you say, Paul, there's a pine tree right there. Well, that's one pine tree. There's no pine needles underneath of it. And the reason we don't have the cattle out here with the rest of the pine trees here is because it's not good for cattle to eat pine needles when they're pregnant. Something called pine needle abortion can happen. And I've got a whole video on that. I can go ahead and link that down here in the description as well. That talks about what happens when a cow eats pine needles and why it's bad. All right, let's go ahead and go in here. So this is an electric fence with a solar charger. So I'll just drop that wire. These cows are pretty tame. They're not gonna come charging out the gate or anything. 
Looks like somebody should have washed the windshield before we started this, but that's all right. Okay, so like I said, I feed them this cake once a day. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. That is a milk cow, her name is Mocha. And the rest of her cattle are Simital cattle. Alright, here's Max the cow dog. Not very helpful this time of day when we're feeding the cattle, but he likes to come and help. So as you heard there, saw there, I honk the horn. So we've got our cows what's called horn trained. So when I honk that horn, it associates food and that brings them to the corral. So in the long run, when you're a small operation, there might be one person doing the work and trying to get them sorted and all that kind of stuff. This is one step to make it easier where you don't have to get them in the pen chasing them around. They come to the horn. All right, this definitely is not our whole herd. They're out and about the nice weather. They're out somewhere out in the pasture. Oh, there's one more coming over there. And plus I'm feeding them a little bit earlier today as I'm shooting this video right here. But so this pen right here is the cow corral. So the cows can come in here. Something else we have is a cow shelter back here. There's a shelter, there's a windbreak. Cause as I was saying earlier, it can get very cold here, very windy and some snow. So that's kind of their protection, their shelter. As we turn around here, Oh, there's Melvin the barn cat on the side by side. I've got just another pen over here that's got some, some bum calves or bucket calves that we raised last year in a separate pen because I don't want them in with the cows because the cows are kind of pushing them around and they get their own feed over here. And then as we kind of go over here, it's kind of our small working facilities. And then a stock tank over here on the other side of the side by side. One stock tank for the, the mother cows and then one over here for these bucket calves or these bum calves we're feeding out. So our working facilities here, very simple. Not a whole lot of money invested into it because we're just a small herd right here, but we wanted to make it work. So coming through the corral right here, I've just got another pen right here. I've got a broken board. I actually need to have a post set right there, but when I load it out or I think when we preg checked last time, that got broke. So that needs to get fixed. But anyway, here's just a little sorting pen in here. And this is, important this time of the year with calving season coming up to make sure it's going to work in case I've got to pull a calf, doctor a cow, anything like that. So, so I just have a simple basic what you'd call an alleyway with a head catch. I don't have a fancy shoe, a high dollar shoot. This is a self catch head gate and I'll show you how that works. Okay there's a self catch head gate right there. I've got a gate right here that I can open up I need to get to that cow to pull a calf to preg check whatever but self-catch I like that because more than likely it's probably gonna be one person down here if a cow has problems calving in the middle of the night or something like that more than likely it's gonna be me down here as Billy will be with the kids so I like the self the head catch because they just go in here and then like that and they're caught so now that cow's head is stuck in that what's called an automatic head catch where it's a regular shoot you need somebody out here running that and then somebody back here pushing them forward which couldn't be done with one person pushing and shutting that yes it's been done before i've done it all right we got those girls fed there we're gonna go ahead and feed those bucket calves those bum calves their cow cake right now All right, gave those girls their treat right there. So in their pen, I've got a round hay bale right here. Yes, I do have a bale feeder in there. I know this looks kind of bad, but the other day when I put this bale in there, it was about 20 below. The skid steer was starting to gel up, so I just dumped it over the fence and tried to get back to the house and the skid steer still gelled up anyway. But anyway, I prefer to keep their hay in a, a hay ring right there, a bale feeder. Keeps them from wasting it. So along with that, they've also got a salt block and a mineral lick tub. So right there, just a salt block, a mineral lick tub, and then of course their feed bunk right there. 
both the calves, the bum calf water, the cow water's right here. I got a hydrant right here to fill these up. There's tank heaters in there to keep them from freezing. This one right here, I've got a board on it to try and keep some of the heat in there. And then right here, I've just got a hydrant with a very short hose that shoots into that tank. All right, I'm gonna go down over here where I have the hay bale for these cows and show you the rest of the cows and the hay bale and how we feed the hay bale down here. Alright, here's the rest of our cows down here at this hay bale feeder or ring feeder, some people call it like that. I just think that it helps because it wastes less hay. So this hay right here is actually stuff that we put up on my parents' place over the summer. We utilize our tractor, help my parents to put up this hay, and then we bring some hay back here to feed our cattle over the wintertime as there's not enough grass to utilize in the wintertime. They do fall graze up until I lock them into this pasture to keep them away from the pine trees. Then I start to feed hay, which we had a very mild uh, fall this year. So I was able to keep them out grazing up until the end of November, which was pretty good. So this pasture is about seven acres of our whole property. Like I said, pretty well protected. If you look up behind me, there's that big rim rock over there. So our whole property kind of sits down in a bowl. So it's pretty protected as far as the wind. Do we get wind? Yes. Do we get cold? Yes. So as you can look in this pasture, there's several little nooks, crannies, draws, stuff like that. Because will the cows go up to the calving or the cow shelter to calve? More than likely not in my experience. They're gonna have it out here, wander off somewhere by themselves, because if it's bad weather, all the cows are gonna be up there, and the one that wants to calve is gonna be down here, unless we get her locked in prior to the storm coming through. All right, over here at the other end of the calving patch, we've got another mineral lick tub that the cattle utilize for more supplements. So the reason we have that is just to give them some more nutrients, some more protein here in the winter months as they are pregnant or when they are nursing with their calves. So this just helps those mother cows produce better milk and a better calf. All right, right here behind me is a fence charger we use to charge the hay yard along with the rest of the calving pasture right there. So it's a solar fence charger. This one I've had for, I don't know, two or three years. Works pretty good, so never had any problems with it. All right, behind me is our hay yard. So right here, I've just got a couple of corn stalk bales, which that's actually pretty rare from where we live. I just got a deal on them a few years ago. A guy trucked them up here, and I guess use these for bedding. I don't feed these. These are bedding, so I'll either, either use these or wheat straw. Don't have any straw this year, so I'm gonna utilize these, finish the year out utilizing these as bedding. Moving over here is the rest of the hay. So it's a, a grass with a little bit of alfalfa mixed into this, net wrapped and stacked into our hay yard right here. So this hay right here is what we'll feed from November up until about May when the cows go to their summer pasture. Now, you might be wondering, well, how much hay does it take to feed a cow? Well, a cow is gonna consume about 2% of its body weight in a day, and then you've gotta also incorporate some waste in there. Because as you saw down over the hill over there, they don't eat it all, they leave some on the ground, they're not gonna com completely eat it. So these bells here are anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 pounds roughly. The cow's gonna eat 2% of her body weight. Our cow's weighing anywhere from 12 to 1,400 pounds, puts it in about that 26 to 30 pound range when you figure in the waste. So if you figure 30 pounds a day, the, your cow is gonna consume. So something to think about if you're a small uh, cattle operation or looking to start a small cattle operation is how much hay you're gonna need for the year. We buy it uh, dealing in tons. We don't buy it uh, figuring in bales because the bale size could vary year to year. So I always figure out how much hay that one cow is gonna consume for the winter time, add in some waste, and then multiply that by how many other cows we have that year. Gets me to how many bales I need to bring home here, put in the hay yard to feed our cattle through the winter time. 
All right, there's just a quick rundown about our small cattle operation here on our farm. If you got any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. Boop that like button, hit that subscribe button if you, if you have not did so already. As I'm gonna have more videos coming up as calving season's getting near, I'm gonna take you guys through the calving process and, and what I do to get prepare for that. And if we start to have problems as far as having to pull a calf and how we tag a calf and all that kind of stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and post another video right down here that talks about making an income on a small farm. Kind of runs through all of our enterprises real quick. So if you want to go ahead and check that out as well. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.